from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I doubt our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5-800-TOM. John, on like it's 101, hello. Tom, how you doing? Great. Hey, do you know, here's my situation. Um, I was... Uh... My girlfriend found a pair of my ex-girlfriend's panties in my end drawer, in my in my end table next to my bed. And the thing is, I didn't even know that they were there. So it was just kind of, and she was just all pissed off and just kind of like, "What the hell are these?" And what? Wait, wait a minute. Why do you have a girlfriend? Well, I don't know. I mean, I I, I love her, you know. Uh huh. And she's a good girl, and uh, you know we get along well, so. I mean, how old is she? She's twenty-two. Too young and immature to be in a relationship. Yeah, well, I mean, she's a cool girl. Well, she's yeah, also she's immature. Whatever, so. She's also immature. That's why you're having the problem you're having now. Well, I mean, do you think it's do you think it's it's normal? For, I mean, I know it's probably normal for her to uh, react this way, but she. Thinks it is when they're too young and immature to be in a relationship. Yes. Well, see, the worst part about it was that the panties were dirty still, you know? And it was probably in my drawer for probably like eight months um, from when I, you know, I, it was there for like eight months. Um, I don't know. It was it was a bad situation. She just blew up, got really upset, and I just didn't know what to tell her. And I, I really convinced her that it was my ex-girlfriend's panties. And it was just some situation where, you know, me and my ex-girlfriend got done doing the deed. Yeah. We're losing you. There we go. Uh, she's too immature to be in a relationship, and uh, you're not going to listen to me, so you're going to have to continue to put up with this kind of nonsense. Steven on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, how you doing? Great. Um, i got to thank you. Um, I, I broke your rules. I um, was uh, went out with this uh, woman that I met uh on internet dating, uh, a divorced mother. So that that's the rule I broke. But uh, uh, I wound up being in, uh, in bed with her and uh, we're having sex. And, you know, when I reach to put a condom on, she doesn't, doesn't want the condom. But I, I put it on and we're having sex. And uh, she keeps on pleading that she wants to feel me, that I should take the condom off. And that rule, Tom, I would not break. Um, I would not do that. We yeah, because to... she wants to feel your wallet. That's what she wants to feel. Well, that's what I get for breaking rule number one. But uh, the... What was rule number one that you broke? Uh, going out with a uh, single mother. Okay. Uh, that I shouldn't do, but the, uh, you know, your ear, your voice was in my head with the moment she said, you know, no condom. And uh, I owe you big time for that. Well, she believe me, that's what she told the last guy who's now paying her. Well, um, no more single single mothers, and uh, definitely keep it covered. How did she react when you had sex with her anyway with a condom? Well, you know, uh, uh, she was on, on top, and she she kept on pleading with me that uh, you know she she wanted to feel me. You know, she she was very hot. You know, feel very um, hot, and she, but she wanted to feel me without it, and um, you know, there's no way. But you know, I could see where that uh, pleading for, from a, a woman could, you know, give tempt a guy to to give in. You know, yeah, I'd like it too. It feels better without without a condom. Um, but uh, like you said, that uh, 
10 seconds of pl- pleasure wouldn't be worth 18 years of payments. That's correct. So uh, thanks for uh, getting in my head. You definitely uh, saved me big time. Did you see her again after that? Uh, no, no. Um, it it was uh, uh, it, it wasn't going to work work uh, where I uh, that would be every time, and I didn't need that hassle. You know, it's like uh, yeah, she's nice. I enjoyed her company, and she was a hot woman. But uh, you know that that fight wasn't going to go away. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure she wanted to be fertilized. Um, can I? Can I ask you a question on, uh, I've got no game in public. I, I've been meeting women on the Internet. Um, physically, I'm kind of uh, the way you look without a good goatee. I've got a big gut. And uh, uh, I wonder if you had any advice for, uh, you know, uh, on the Internet I'm okay, but like going to a bar, I kind of clam up. And I wonder if you had any uh, uh, pickup advice. Clamming up is good. Clamming up is good. You know, approaching women is the wrong thing to do. I don't know what you meant. I mean, you clam up at a bar, that's fantastic. That's good. Why is that? Because you don't want to be talking to chicks. Uh, that, that puts you at a disadvantage. You want to come into a bar like like you're not there to meet chicks. Like you're there just to have a few drinks and keep to yourself. And just uh, somebody winds up being next to you, then... They, they, no, they will start talking to you. Women can't stand to be ignored. And at some point, they're going to say, hey, like, I'm here, over here. That sounds good. You want to be in the power position. You don't leave. He wants your sign. Oh, forget it. You don't want to be that. And I don't care. You know, it's like I want to meet somebody, see if she's, uh, um, can get into me and just uh, take her home. And then you can get into her. Exactly. Well, thanks a lot, Tom. I, I appreciate your show. I'm here to help. Thank you, Stephen. Very nice. What? Can you believe that he has no game, Gary? Hard to believe. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Amber, it's an Amber Alert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I love you. Thank you, Amber. Yeah, I hear that all the time. Amber Alert. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> My question is, is, okay, I'm giving up everything I can for a man, sex every night. It's, it was great for three years, three years. It was basically four years, but three years. So you're doing this as a favor? You're giving it up to him? Oh, it was awesome. It was great. We had a great relationship. I broke your rules for a few years. Yeah, I listened to you before. And then I moved up to an area where I did not get your station. And how'd that yeah. work out for you? Awful. Yeah. Three years. It was great. The fourth year went downhill. Anyway, the fourth year ended up being where I found, um, you know, pictures on the, on his computer of him with these other chicks from his camera dates, times, everything. And I just kind of want to know from a man's perspective, why did that happen? Well, let's start with why were you going through his computer? Because I used it also. Yeah, but you didn't have to go to the subdirectory where the JPEGs were, okay? You could have just stayed no, there on victoriasecret.com and usweekly.com. You didn't have to then go and check subdirectories where there were photographs. We had shared pictures and all that so he 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 saved the pictures. What, like in the folder that's called my pictures? He just saved them with the other snapshots. Yeah, it was kind of lame. They were just there, obvious, not protected anything. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. So uh, you were living with him, were you? Yeah, I was. That's a that's a bad one. I know. <laughs> and it's a bad one. I know. And, uh, okay, so you're living with him, and uh, th- this was all going on while you were there. And then when you asked him about it, he said what? Well, first he denied everything until I brought up the fact that I found them. And then it was, oh, no, nothing happened. It was just pictures. It was just, you know, we did this and this and that, but no actual, you know, I don't know what I say on radio, no actual intercourse 
And I'm like, yeah, right. Come on. Well, where was he? Where was he hanging out with these chicks? Uh, in the area we lived. You could so tell he must have been meeting the them online. Was he meeting them online or something? <laughs> you could tell it was the area we lived, where it was her car and his car out in the, you know, out in the desert. <laughs> well, clearly, he was not as satisfied with you as you were with him. But, but that's what I'm asking. Yeah, because I, I mean, we had great, great sex. Yeah, but women frequently say this, and then I later find out that, you know, he needed it six times a day and you needed it three times a week. Or he wanted no. to do things you didn't want to do. Or uh, <laughs> well, there were things other women would do that you wouldn't do. No, it, no. I, I, I love So you did anything, you did anything he wanted. Yes. Anytime. Yes. Any place. Yes. As much as I'm, he wants. And I'm wondering, okay, this might be another factor also, but there was an age difference. It was a May-December relationship. Well, how late in December was it? <laughs> I'm 29. He was 49. That's not quite May-December. That's more like uh, you know, March and September. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, he had a type of profession where he was out and involved with many various types of people at all times and I was kind of stay at home had a very local you know minimum wage kind of job so he and, and you're 29 and you have, wait let me ask you another question you're 29 and you have a minimum wage job why is that it yeah, awful I know I don't know just because does that have to I, do with the way you see yourself no it's just it was just easy work why why are you so lazy? I don't know. I mean I, I'm a college, you know, graduate and high school graduate, all that, but it was just But you're lazy. I didn't Yeah, I am. Why? I don't know. Because <laughs> I was living with him and he was, you know, paying for everything pretty oh, much. Ho, 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 yeah, ho, yeah. Ho. Well you see you're putting yourself in a position. He's paying for everything. You're contributing very yeah, little. He had me move in with him when I was going through troubles, so he was kind of my sugar daddy. Well, you know, darling, so now the picture that. now the picture becomes clearer. Yeah, I, I if I'm paying for that. everything, I have the right to do whatever I want. I mean, I still always had a job, but it was just my own little tinker toy money, you know. Right, it was your mad money to go along with the other money he was giving you. <laughs> yeah. My guess yeah. is you've got uh, eleven dollars and forty six cents in the bank. It was pretty much some kind of close. You know? Right. And so the the bottom line here is that you were in this position of uh, uh, essentially servitude. And well, I crave it. I need it. I want it. I love it. Servitude? Love it. You love servitude? Love it. So you like to answer to a man who's in charge? Yeah. But if he's in charge, that means he can do whatever he likes. Yeah. And I realized that. So he did. Go anywhere. So he did he what he wanted. wanted. So he, but he did what he wanted. But he told me he wouldn't. I don't care what he told you. But why would he? He didn't want to hear you nagging him or telling him don't do it. No, I never nagged. He was the nagger, actually. Wait a minute. I had to stay home. I had to do this. If I he to said to you, uh, I'm here on Match.com, and I, or I'm on Adult Friend Finder, and I'm going to go around the neighborhood seeing what other chicks are out there who will also do stuff with me, okay? I'll be back later. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm taking the digital camera, honey. <laughs> and you would not have said anything if he said that to you? When it came to that kind of stuff, which we did. I'm not talking about with you. If he came to you honestly and said, honey, I've been online and I found chicks in our neighborhood who are willing to meet me in their car and do all kinds of things with me in front of my camera. So I'll be back uh, tomorrow. Would you have said, oh, okay, have a good time? I said I needed to meet them also. So, I had to be there. Darling, let me point. I know. Isn't darling, that when, you, when you start getting into that, I'm no prude. Okay. I said just let me know about anything Forg you Forget it. Doing darling, when, darling, I'm no prude. When you start blurring the lines. When you tell him it's okay to be with chicks as long as he brings them home, as long as you meet them, whatever, uh, you have now blurred the line. There's no such thing as monogamy or polygamy or uh, being faithful or unfaithful. You've now taken out. There's no clear rule. 
Okay. And so he does whatever he wants. And, and you know, all right, so you didn't get around to bringing her home to meet you. Big deal. You can't be making, look, you, so either, you, was, you either have a monogamous relationship or you don't. He was doing that stuff on the side, even though I told him, at least tell me about it. I don't care if you do it on the side. Maybe it was more fun for him it. doing it, but when he was getting away with something. So I just, oh, dear. I, I tell all. people. I tell people all the time. No swinging if you're in a relationship. No threesomes. <laughs> I know. No orgies. I know. Like I said, I broke. While I was living with him, I was out of your range. Anyone who needs to do these things should not be in a relationship. That's why I put myself there. You put yourself in the position. Okay. This but, is what okay, happens I'm when you do it. Now I'm out of it now. Good. Yeah. I'm way so don't out of ever now. do it again. I'm back to your rules, and I'm, I'm doing that. I I love you. Oh my god, I like listen to you every day, and I'm. Well, then t- then rules. take some serious advice from me. Okay, yeah. get a real job. Oh no, no, yeah, now it's all cool. How much do you make? Eleven an hour. Not- That's better than minimum wage. <laughs> Eleven an hour is poverty line. To me, you're a college that- graduate. No, no. Stop. <laughs> Donna, you're getting too old to be an ingenue who's looking for a sugar daddy. You need to oh, get no a more. real no. job and a real career. Right. Do it. Or this 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 pattern will repeat itself forever. Right. I'm over all that. I'm eleven dollars an hour is nothing. Hmm. I live off it. Not enough. Very happily. No. How, how much are you putting into your retirement account? I don't know. How much do you have in mutual funds? <laughs> None of that, yeah. How much is in your IRA? Oh, really? Yeah. Your 401k? About what about your 401k? I, no, I try to listen to all that, but I have no clue. Well, that's my point, dear. I know. Uh, the fact I know. that you're living off it doesn't mean it's enough. It means you have deferred thinking about the future. You are one missed paycheck away from living in a dumpster. <laughs> it's not funny. I know. I know. You're 29 years old. It's time to grow up. So what do you suggest? I just told you. If you need more education, get it. If not, start applying for jobs that have to do with what you studied in college rather than getting a job at uh, some arts and crafts store or whatever it is you're doing. But they're all the same, too. It's all, it's like... What did you study in school? What did you study in school? Criminal justice. Why aren't you doing that? Because it all starts off the same. What does that mean? It's all like, it's it's less than 11 an hour. That's fine. But at least you're working in your chosen field and you have the credentials to move up, which you, right now, the, the 11 is where you're going to be. That's it. What are you, sitting there waiting for that check for the president to come? <laughs> no. Not at all. Can't wait to get my $800 check. <laughs> no. I'm going to buy a DVD player. Come on, Amber. You're living below the poverty level. I know. And this is how you get into these situations. But there's no rich CSIs or corrections officers. We're not talking about rich, darling. Who chose that as a major? You. Right. Did you do any research to what these jobs pay? No. Somewhat, but no, yeah. No, the answer is no, you didn't. If you don't have enough education to do what you're really interested in doing, go back and even, get more education. Even a corner. I, I, I want to get into the corners, but... These jobs don't it's so pay! Political. It's so political. If you don't know somebody, you can't get in it. Well, then, then you know what? You should have discovered this before you chose a major. I know. And now you need to go back to school. 
I'm already in debt from that. I'm still paying then, off. Then, then you go to community That's college or you go to one of these, you know, University of Phoenix or one of these things. But you got to go back and get more training. Otherwise, you're going to continue to be, uh, the, you know, a subservient to some guy. Tom, 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 Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. My ex called me the other day. She was saying, oh, I'm having problems. I need to talk. It's been two years. She has two guys who she doesn't know who the, her baby father could be. And that would have been me, too, if it wasn't for Likus 101. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. <laughs> Mike is 101 with your professor in Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Mika on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. I haven't talked to you but for the third time now. But um, before we hang up, you have to blow me up. Well, don't tell me how to do the show. I've been doing it for a long time before I you know, came along. I know, but I called you three times, and that's all I asked. So I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm tell you a couple things. I absolutely agree with, like, I just went to Thailand with my boyfriend. And hey, we're on the air. The oh. next time you use the F word or any curse word is the end of the conversation. Okay, I'm sorry. He had sex with other women. And so it's a double standard because it's not okay for me to, you know, with well, that. That's Thailand. You know, and, and, well, but it's also just the way it is. Like, if I'm with my boyfriend, that's the way he, he is. And, well, and that's have, because you tolerate it. I know. And so I, if I, you're Steve, it, he's, and I, if I he's allowed still, it to happen. Well, there you go. So, but what's the problem? So, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I don't want it to happen again. Well, the way to no, make it and, not happen again and, is well, to have the integrity the to leave. Well, I, I, yeah, exactly. It's, so it's when, really, are you, when will you together, be leaving? We've been together for eight years. When will you be leaving? Well, we've been together for eight years. That, I'll take that as a you're not leaving. Well, uh, maybe I will leave. No, you're not leaving because you would have left already. Well, um, I think that after a while he was able to be honest with me. And he was never honest with me before. So... What are when you talking I, about? No, I'm talking about like when he went on vacation without me, and then that's that's he, a sign right there. I know, of course that. But, but, but it, you tolerated like, it, of course. And but I'm saying, do you think that it's possible for him to change? He's not going to change. He he's is never going to change. He he's is who he be is. His way. Yeah, he's going to always be that way. But the, you chose him. I know, and I don't. Do don't like blame. Him. Stop like, blaming him. But I like girls, too. Stop but it's not the blaming same thing. him. No, I know. Exactly. That's what my dad said, too. I talked to my dad about this, and my dad totally agrees. He says not to blame him. And I can't blame him. I have to just, you know, but it's not fair. Like, he won't let it me. It has nothing to do with fairness. He, you he chose him. Me, he won't let me, like, mess around with other guys, so it's not like a You have every right situation. to leave. You have every right to go. Exactly. So go. That's that's it, huh? You can't control like, him. Not, you can't change him. I love him. But and I, I love him. I know. He's totally unfair. And he does what he wants. And it's a double standard. But I love him. It's a really, really whiny voice. It's a joke. It's I'm a joke. I'm really nice about it. But you know what? I'm a grown woman. And you know what? And I also wanted to tell you that I'm the one that I always insisted on condoms. I don't, it's, none of this has and anything to do with anything else. No, but, but I'm also going to tell you something else. I also had an abortion. 
That, with him. I don't. That doesn't. I made that decision. I don't care. It does not change who he is. He wants sex with other women. I know. End of I story. And that's why I'm like. I'm like. And by the way, darling, another way you got yourself. Another that. way you got yourself into this. I'm not putting you on hold. Another way you got yourself into this is like. Well, I like to be with other women too. You know I me. Mean? I like to be with him, but I also like to be with other women. You blur the lines of the relationship, and so this is what you're entitled to. This is what you get. Second. Okay. What? Well, listen to me first. You haven't listened to me at all. I have listened to you. You blurred the lines of the years. relationship. You did that. I got I got my boyfriend listening to your show. If ago. you have a boyfriend, really? My my parents were English majors, so. Uh huh. So. <laughs> that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you were. Uh well, you know, monogamous. Okay. <laughs> When you start anyway, saying things like, I like to anyway, be with him and two, you, and well, you, to why don't you want to hear this phrase I'm about to say to you? You, you, you know what I'm about to say, and you don't want to hear it. I now, shut up. Shut up now, and let me say what I'm going to say. Okay. And I want you to hear what I'm saying. Okay. When you say, well, I like being with women, too. I mean, I like being with him, but I also it's like being with women. the same thing. You, I told you to shut up. Okay. Go ahead. And then are you going to hear me out after? Maybe not. No, okay. Well, I'll give you your opportunity right now. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to give you your opportunity. You know what your opportunity is? <sighs> Tom, why don't you take women seriously? <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. He wanted to live with me, but, you know, the worst thing that he ever did was have me listen to you because the more I listen to you, the more I realize that he's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Yes. And here in LA, you can also hear the best of Tom like his Sundays at eleven, one, three, four, five, six, nine, eleven. It's on all the time. At, oh, don't forget the tasting room on Sunday from seven to nine. That's right. <laughs> you know, what would this station do without me here in L.A.? What would they do? I'm on the air 45, 50 hours a week. Thank God I don't have to come in 45, 50 hours a week. That's more than I could take. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Likas 101. I am your professor. Jesse on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Good, good to talk to you, man. Um, sure it is. I just, I just wanted to talk to you about, you know, I'm just, actually I'm a little nervous, but um, I just wanted to say, you know, I'm really feeling your ideas when it comes to the bullpen theory. You're feeling me? And, uh, I'm feeling it, you know, like I've, I've been trying to follow like this 101, and it's going good so far, but there's this one chick that I have in the bullpen who is always texting me things like, I miss you, what are you up to, when are we going to see each other? Yeah. And I'm and I'm always like, anytime, babe, like, let's get together. Like, I'm always, like, trying to push it. And then she always has an excuse, like, oh, I, but I'm working or I'm really right. tired tonight. And I've had like, a few of these. Right, let, me, let me cut you short there. First of yeah. all, when women send those texts, they are generally either A, out at a bar or a club with their friends, or B, with another guy. And they suddenly realize while they're sitting alone for five minutes that uh, they haven't sent you a message lately and they just have to keep you in the game. That could be. That that's could be. all right. Uh, that's that's one thing. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that what you need to do when women do this, which is what I have learned, is to just simply put them on ice. Don't respond to the text messages. I've done that. I've done, I've done that. Just don't I've respond. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. you, you could send one message that says, when you're ready to meet up, give me a call. And then don't yeah. respond anymore. All right, because then it gives her the ultimatum that we're going to have to meet up 
until we text each well, other. Well, you know, you're not putting it in the form of an ultimatum. All you're saying is, when you're ready to meet up, give me a call. Yeah. And then yeah. don't ever respond to another text message until you've seen whether she's shaved or unshaved. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I have another question when it comes to Like Us 101 right. um, and, and the ball pin. Um, I have my ex-girlfriend of, like, on again, off again, six years right. in the bullpen, too. Yes. And um, she she's, like, totally in love with me. I know it, but I don't know if I really love her because, like, obviously I wouldn't be doing having the bullpen, you know, if I loved her. But I do care about her, and I do like seeing her. She's hot as hell. She lets me leave it in. And What? What? Oh, what? What? Just, what? Well, I, I, I usually don't use a condom with her. Oh, Jesse, don't tell me I that. I know. I know, I know. I think that's part of the reason why I'm calling you. Women who don't care if you use a condom want to have a baby with you. I know she's actually even said it. But well, she's then, but always, pal. But she's always used a birth control. and That's never, what she tells you. Yeah. But in six years of doing that, she's never gotten pregnant. That doesn't mean she never will. That is true. Yeah, I know this. I know this. I and as she gets closer to 30 years old, she will. I know. I know. You're totally right. Why can't you just use a condom? I'm just too... I don't know. I think I partly kind of want to have a kid, but I... I'm no, 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 yet. no, no. Yeah. No, you want to have sex without a condom. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't care about having a kid. Yeah. You're right. You have to turn this around. You have to use condoms. And I'll bet you're not using condoms with other women as well. No, I always use condoms with other women all the time. Well, you should use condoms with this one, too. Yeah, I know you're right. I just need to hear you say it. Um, but what do you think of even having her in the bullpen? I mean, is that... I don't think it's wise because it sounds to me like she's ramping up to try to put her claws into you, and you're just yeah. dopey enough to let her do it. <laughs> you're totally right. I'm so dopey when it comes to that chick. Oh, man. All right. I, I appreciate you you know, taking my call and everything. Somebody has to be honest with you, Jesse. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> Hang on a I second here. Casey, what did you want to say to Jesse? Man, this guy's a douchebag. What's he doing having his ex in the bullpen? I know you're. I know you're totally right. I knew it was a bad. If she lets you leave it in, what is that? I know. I know. I know. That's I all know. you got. You need. You, I think you need to start over with uh, both of these supposed women you got in your, in your bullpen, there, buddy. Yeah, it's not a very good bullpen, is it? <laughs> Uh, not, no, not to say the least. If, if you've been following Tom, uh, you should know better than be doing anything like that. I know. I know. You're right. You know, I, I just had to hear it from Tom. Slap some sense into me, so I'm going to start doing things better. <laughs> Starting <laughs> immediately. Right, hey, Tom, can you take me out the bong yet? Uh, well, yes, I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Brett on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, love the show. Thank you. Uh, what I have going on is uh, my girlfriend and I, after eight months, just split up this Saturday. This last Saturday, and uh, why you're twenty two? Why do you have a girlfriend? Yes, I did. No, no. Why? Uh. Well, it started out with me wanting to find a girl, you know, for the obvious reasons, and uh, just got hooked on to this girl. And You could have just had sex with her. I'm sorry? You could have just had sex with her. Yeah, well, that's that's actually what I'm getting to. Um, we broke up, but she's been, you know, calling me and wanting me to come over, and we, we've actually had, you know, sex for the last, for two times in the last week after we broke up. And um, my problem is, is that she's always asked me the last few times I was with her, she asked me that um, if I was seeing other girls. And I haven't really had the chance to, but I have gone over to my friend's house, you know, wanting to hang out with other girls and whatever happens, happens. 
So she says that if I have sex with like other girls, she would want, not want to have sex with me anymore. So I'm wondering, my question is to you, is that should I just say, you know, forget her and go with other girls? Are you or? capable of just having sex with this girl? Or or do you have to be in love and be in a relationship? No, I, I can just call her up and she'll go over ever with me and do it. That's what happens. In, that's what happened the last two times. Well, I, I I don't care who you have sex with. It's when you start getting emotionally involved with people who are effed up. That's when I get worried about it. Well, we 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 were emotionally involved, but it was sort of mutual because we were fighting a lot and everything. And so we're just pretty much friends that hang out and have sex at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I'm friends with benefits. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. So, but you know, if she finds out that I'm going, I'm doing with doing it with other girls, and she cuts it off with me, is that something I should be worried about? Because, I mean, she doesn't... What do you... Uh, what, uh, look, do you, how many women do you need in your bullpen? Uh, Let me guess, she's the only one. Well, she was the only one until I got with someone else for a little bit, but then she's... But that person's gone, so she's the only one again. Right, but I'd like to have two or three. Uh, you should have five. <laughs> Don't laugh. Okay. Why, why do you think that's funny? Because you don't have the game to get five chicks? Uh, I do have a full-time job. I just don't know if, you know. I have a full-time job. You know what? I have a full-time job, too. <laughs> this is it. Right. Right? I have chicks. Yeah, I mean, now why not? I'll go for five. I'll go for more. You know. But you won't. You're a one woman man. That's what you are. You're Captain Save a Ho, I can tell. <laughs> no, it's purely about sex. I think about it, you know, constantly. So, um, you know, if she cuts me off, is that something that I should try to chase? What do you care? You know, the thing is, look, the bottom line here is that. You should be able to do whatever you want. You're 22 years old. If she's going to start giving you rules and regulations, move on. Who cares? Yeah, she was. Then move on. For sure. Move well, on. Uh, all right. Um, all right. Thank you for that. Alex on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Um, long time. First time. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, I have a girlfriend. I'm about 30. Why, she's about why, why do you have a girlfriend? Uh, that's a good question. All right. Well, if I if you have to say I, that's a good question, then if you don't have an answer for that, then you shouldn't have a girlfriend. Okay. How about a, I should be having a several would be right. No, no. Having several chicks in the bullpen is not having a <laughs> none of them are girlfriends. Yeah, not a girlfriend. That's right. Anyhow, um, I've got some. Uh, how, how should I say this? Um. She she does have a kid. Um, he's oh. going to be. He's gonna be. <laughs> Strike two. Why are you with a single mother? True. Well, it's, I'm it's, asking why. I'm, I'm attracted to her. I don't care if you're attracted to her. She's a single mother. Uh huh. And single mothers provide provide, provide a uh, um, a source of uh, b b problems and issues and. Yes. And are you finding that out? Yeah, I'm thinking that. Right. What are you finding? I'm finding all sorts of trouble. Well, I don't have all night. Why don't we? So don't make me be uh, Sherlock Holmes. Just get to what those problems are, please. Uh, all the court issues and the court the issues. Stuff. She's still fighting over custody. Yes, custody and all the all the other stuff. I guess. What other stuff? Child support. Um. Just yeah. Legal. All the legal issues. Child support. Custody. Grandparents visits. All that. There you go. You chose it. <laughs> true, true. But what do you what do you suggest? Don't date single mothers. Don't. Yeah. I, I, well, I figured that one out, but it's a little too late. No, it's not too late. You can stop effective immediately, and you should. It's the Tom Likas Show.